Hi guys, I'm in Japan. You gotta be quiet here. Anyways, grab a blanket, turn off your lights for three true scary Japanese horror stories. I was in Japan last week. So recently, I went on a trip with my family to Japan. Overall, I really enjoyed myself and thought it was a beautiful country, but one thing happened to me that kind of puts me off. I had recently got out of the hospital before we went on the trip, recently meaning two days out of hospital. I got my appendix removed and blood sucked out of my stomach. So as you can probably imagine, I was not in the best shape and very sore and incredibly fucking tired. My family had decided they would go out and explore a temple, but I stayed back in the hotel because I was in too much pain and needed to rest. About two hours after my family had left, I decided I was hungry. Seeing a 7-Eleven out my hotel window, I decided to go and get something to eat because it wasn't too much of a walk and there was no room service or anything like that. So I set off on my small journey to get some food. After buying some kebab things and a strange cake, I went to the small seating area to sit and eat because I was too tired to walk back yet. It was just me and an older Japanese man sitting behind me. I felt someone touching my hair. I turned around and he started trying to tell me how beautiful my hair was, but his English was terrible. So I just smiled and said, thank you. This was not uncommon as I have strawberry blonde hair and a lot of people in Japan seemed to be fascinated with it. People always came up and touched it. I got back to eating, but soon after the man moved next to me and started trying to talk to me again. To be completely honest, I sort of felt obliged to try and communicate because he seemed so cute and old and innocent and I just wanted to be nice. Bad idea. Shortly after, he decided to take a seat next to me. He starts saying short phrases in English. Incredibly sexual short phrases. His English seemed to have gotten better. He continued to ask me for sex and tell me I was beautiful. And I was very uncomfortable at this point and got up and just left the 7-Eleven. At this point, he decided it would be really cool and a fun idea to come outside with me. I was so tired and needed more pain medication, so at this point, I just couldn't deal with this shit. I wanted to go back to the hotel and just nap. I turned around and began cursing and telling him to leave me alone now. All of a sudden, he got this very angry look on his face and actually spat on me. I was so furious at this point that I turned around, ignored the pain in my stomach, and walked home so angrily, I probably looked like a cartoon character or something. So, although this is not as creepy as some of the other stories on here, this freaky old guy is definitely someone I would prefer not to meet again. Wandering around Japan when... So, this is a creepy story involving an encounter a friend and I had in Tokyo, Japan while living there in 2003. For those of you who have never been to Tokyo, the city is bustling and busy up until midnight. Once midnight hits, the train system shuts down, so you're on a train at 11.59 and it's about to turn midnight. The train will go to the next stop on its tracks and then everyone has to get off. You spend many nights in Tokyo planning how late you can stay out and still get home without having to walk three or four stops distance. This night, my friend and I messed up and ended up having to get off the Yamato line, probably the most famous line in Tokyo, four stops before where we lived. Knowing only the vague direction we had to head home, east, we got off at a station at 12 o'clock at night and started walking. Around the corner from the station, there was a businessman in his 30s or so, based on his size and hair color, face down on the ground. Now, in Japan, it is not uncommon for people to get drunk and pass out in public places, so I didn't think anything of it and went up to ask him if he was okay. 
After asking him a few times if he was alright, he neither moved nor responded, and then I noticed that not only was he sprawled out on the ground, but his cell phone was also several feet away from his outstretched hand as if he had just collapsed while on his phone. Not sure what to do, I looked to my friend for help. At that exact moment, a car came zooming down the narrow street and stopped at a grinding halt by us. The driver, a young Japanese guy, looked at us first and then looked at the man on the ground. He asked the man if he was alright and got no response. Then, the situation hit him and he saw me and my friend two foreigners standing over what could have been a dead man on the ground. He clearly got spooked out and drove off without pushing the issue further. At that point, how strange a situation this was, and how impossible it would be to explain even in English and not look like we had actually hurt or killed the guy. My friend and I decided to get out there as quickly as possible and we just took off, following the tracks as best as we could to get home as soon as possible. About 20 minutes later, near the next station, who do we run into smoking a cigarette? The guy who had pulled up in his car next to us, he seemed visibly shaken still. He glanced at me and I at him, and once he realized where he saw me from, he put his cigarette out at inhuman speed, got in his car and sped off again. That was the last we saw of him. For years, my friend and I would just randomly discuss what happened to the guy in the car, as well as if the guy in the street was actually dead or not. I wish I would have helped the guy on the ground, but I was a scared college student afraid of being in a Japanese jail. Finally, after writing this whole post now, it occurs to me that while the story is odd from my point of view, the Japanese guy in the car has a real let's not meet story on his hands. Try and think of it from his point of view. I bet some Japanese version of this subreddit somewhere online, he's typing his story of the time I came across two foreigners that had murdered a man and then followed me. Almost lost her in Japan. Sorry if this story isn't written as well as the others. I'm not entirely sure how to document an experience like this. Additionally, this is a throwaway. While I have permission from my girlfriend to post it, nobody else knows, so I don't really want to jeopardize her among peers. Did I say that right? To start off, I had just finished my junior year in high school, and my Japanese language class was taking a trip to Japan to learn more about the language and culture. A friend of mine, and my now girlfriend, who was unable to take Japanese that year, asked to come along, and was allowed to by her teacher. The trip was 13 days, and covered a lot of ground in Japan. This friend, who we'll call Sarah, has a history of horrible headaches and migraines, but neither surfaced during our trip, except for one time. We were in Kyoto, about to watch a performance of various types of Japanese theater, and showed up a bit early. While we were waiting in line to buy our tickets, Sarah started looking a bit distressed. I asked her what was wrong. One of her headaches was coming on, and I had no idea what to do. I only knew it was going to get horrible. In an attempt to relieve her pain, I offered to take her to buy some coffee. The great thing about Japan is that there are vending machines everywhere, and more times than not, they'll have a hot and cold coffee cans in them. So I'm walking her down the main street in Gion District, looking left and right down alleys for one of the vending machines. After a few minutes, I see one in a shady looking alley. Whatever she needs coffee in Japan is pretty safe, right? For the most part, yeah. Looks like we caught an unlucky break. As we get to the vending machine, I start pulling enough yen out of my pocket and have enough for three drinks. It was relatively hot, so I ended up buying a Coke for myself and two coffees for her. As she's picking up the cans from the vending area, I notice a man out of the corner of my eye. Roughly 25 feet down, he got up from the wall, the one that he was leaning on, and starts making his way down towards us. Naturally, I shrug it off and assume he's going in one of the buildings in the alley. 
So we start walking back to the theater house by means of the alleys because they were much quieter and Sarah was having a horrible headache by this time. The sky's still following us. No big deal. I'm sure he's got a house up there, I thought. I hadn't looked back for a while, and when I did, the guy was about 10 feet away from us. That's when I was able to get a good look at him before turning away. Black dress shirt, dark blue jeans, kind of a generic but unfriendly face, and his eyes were trained on Sarah. At this point, I've got every shade of red alert going off in my head, but I have absolutely no clue what I should do if I have to intervene. I'm still holding my can of coke in my hand, and that's about the only weapon I've got besides a knife in my pocket. So, I start to shake it pretty hard just in case. If nothing ends up happening, I'll leave it alone for a while and drink it later in the night. Should I have to use it, then I'll spray it all over the guy's face, and that'll give us enough time to tie tail it back to the main road, where she wouldn't be in any danger. As I'm shaking the can, the guy advances closer and closer, and finally puts his hand on her shoulder. I flip the fuck out and point the can at the guy's face and open it in a matter of seconds, expecting it to shoot a stream of steady carbonated danger in the guy's face. No, just kind of shot off a bit of foam and soda. The guy is stunned briefly and gives her enough time to escape his grip, and I don't know what I was thinking, but I just kind of swing the can in front of his face. About half of the can empties onto the guy's face with open eyes. As he's doubling over in pain, we hauled ass back to the main street and hurried back to the theater. I have no clue what that guy's intentions were, but I'm just glad I was able to keep her out of danger. So, there you have it guys. Thanks for bearing with this long ass story. She was shaken up for a bit, but I think she's doing a lot better now.